Here's the thing, data is messy. It's head banging, swear at your screen, my data is never clean type of messy. So today I'm revealing the code that you should use when you have wow. messy data like this, where your headers start on different rows and you want to combine all these sheets into one. But first, let's look at the process you should definitely not follow to combine these sheets. Convert your data to tables. Then name your tables. I've added the underscore 23. Open up a new workbook and in the data tab, click on get data from file from Excel workbook. I've copied the file path to my workbook. So let's paste it here and let's import it into Power Query. Let's select the folder for the pizza sales transactions and click on transform data. Then in the name column, set a text filter for ends with underscore 23 so that only your tables are returned. Select your name and data column, right click and select remove other columns. Expand your data column and uncheck use original column name as prefix and click OK. And yes, you have combined your tables. But do you really want to manually convert your data to tables, then rename the tables each time? This is not dynamic at all. So let's see what we can do to instead automate this entire process. In a new workbook, let's go to data, get data from file, from Excel workbook, and let's double click the pizza sales transactions workbook to import it. And we have our folder with the sheets that we want to combine. Let's select the folder for pizza sales transactions and not the individual sheets. As whenever a new sheet is added to this folder, we want our data to dynamically combine the new sheets in our query. And let's click Transform Data. Here in our query editor, we get the contents of our file. The first column shows our sheet names, the tables show the data in each of our sheets, and we can see our column headers start on different rows for each of these tables. So the first part of our code that we're going to use is table.removeFirstIn. This function is going to help us remove the rows that we don't need in each of our tables and return our tables without those rows. Next, let's click on the Add Column tab and click on Custom Column. Let's leave the new column name as Custom and let's type table.removeFirstIn. And the IntelliSense brings it up, so let's select it and insert an open bracket. And let's select our data column from our available columns, as this column has our tables that we want returned. And insert a comma, and the next parameter is our count or condition. So let's use three as our count. This means that our first three rows of our tables will be removed. And insert the close bracket, and hit OK. And we get a new column with our tables. And if we click to the right of our tables, we can see the contents. For our first table, our headers were removed, as it is in our first three rows. Our second table, we have our headers, as they weren't in the first three rows that were removed. And the same for our third table. So specifying our count number, in this case we used a random number of three, definitely does not work we need to use a function that makes our count dynamic. And the next part of our code to help us with this is list.positionOf. Let's go back to our custom column step and let's type list.positionOf in the place of the three. And let's select it from the IntelliSense and insert an open bracket. This function finds the position of a specific value in a list and we needed to find the position of our date row in each of our tables. As remember, the date row is where all our column headers are in each of our tables. The first parameter list is the list that we need to search. We need to search column 1 as that's where date is and column 1 is here in our data column. And if we look at our icon on the left here, our data column is a column of tables. But none of these are lists. So we need to convert the column that we want to search, which is column one, to a list. Why? Because list.positionOf requires our first parameter to be a list. To convert a column to a list, let's cut this entire code for now and let's select our data column from our available columns on the right. Then let's type column one in square brackets as columns are in square brackets and hit OK. 
and we have successfully converted our column 1 for each of our tables to a list. Let's go back to our custom column step and paste our code here that we cut. We need to paste it before our data column. Let's insert a comma after our last square bracket of column 1. The second parameter value is the value that we are searching for in our list. In this case, we are searching for date. This needs to be in double quotation marks as this is hard-coded text. And let's insert the close brackets. So we have our table.remove first in with our two parameters. The first one is our table that we want returned. And the second parameter specifies the number of rows that we want removed using list.positionof. List.positionof contains our list that we want to search in our first parameter, which is column 1. Then it's converted to a list, and our second parameter has the value that we want to search, which is our date. And let's hit OK. And we get a new column with our tables where the rows above our headers were dynamically removed. Now, before the final part of our code is revealed, I want to quickly show you what list.positionof is returning in this formula. But before we get to that, 80% of my viewers are still not subscribed. If you're getting value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could please hit the subscribe button as this will really help me hit my 2023 goal of attaining 50,000 subscribers. Now let's get back to our video. So let's go back to our custom step and copy the formula from list.positionof until our second last bracket. And let's click on our source step and click on custom column and click on insert. And let's paste our formula here and we get a column showing us the position of the date row in each of our tables. So here for the Manhattan table, it's in row 1, which is 0 as Power Query is 0 based. And for London, date is here in row 7, which is position 6. So table.remove first in removes everything above the rows that list.positionof specifies. So for example, in our Chennai table, date is in row 5, which is position 4. So it removed everything above row 5. Let's X out this custom step as it was just to show you how list.positionof works. Now for the final part of our code, let's go back into our custom column step and insert a space here after the equal sign, as if we don't, we will overwrite our function. And let's type table.promotedHeaders, and insert the open bracket at the beginning, and a close one at the end, and hit OK. And let's click to the right of our tables, and we have our headers promoted in each of our tables. Now let's combine these tables, let's select our name column, hold down the control key, and select Custom Column. Right-click and select Remove Other Columns. Let's expand our tables and uncheck Use Original Column Name as Prefix. And we have all our tables from our different cities combined. Let's perform a change type step and send this to Excel. We have new data from Cape Town and our headers start on row 4. So let's close this workbook. Remember to save and let's go back to our workbook with the query we just created and hit refresh and everything updates perfectly and Cape Town data has been combined. Now if you have a set of data in this format where you have the field name on the left and the detail of that field on the right and what you actually want is this format here where you have each of your field names as the column headers and the details as the values in each of those columns, then you should definitely check out this video here. It's going to save you a lot of time in your data cleanups.